Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, Wednesday, July 26th, 2023 meeting of the Fall River Redevelopment Authority. Recording of the open session can be viewed at Fall River Government Television, www.frgtv.us. <clears throat> I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recording or transmission are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Need a roll call? Um, Johnny Erickson. Louis Gonzo is here. Joan Medeiros here. Ron Rusin here. Ann Keen here. Okay, also participating are Sarah Page, Executive Director, John Coughlin, Council, Kenny Fadola, Administrative mm -hmm. Services Consultant, Karen Martin, Project Coordinator, and Executive mm -hmm. Assistant. Uh, first item uh, on our list here is approval of the open, open session minutes from June 28th, 2023. Uh, anybody have any questions on those minutes? No? Motion to accept. Second. Second. John Erickson, yes. Louis Consoles, yes. Joan Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ken Keen, yes. Okay. Uh, you all have a copy of the warrant. $33,434.11. Joan went through it. Um, any questions on, on any of those? Motion to approve warrant. Actually, I just said the wrong amount. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, it's 94. It's 94. <laughs> 94 is 477.01 total. Yep. Um, Motion to approve warrant and 94,477.01. Second. Second. John Erickson, yes. Louis Contos, yes. Joan Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ann Keene, yes. Um, I'll entertain a motion to authorize the treasurer and executive director to proceed with opening a higher APY money market account at Bay Coast Bank and the transfer of $10 million into the new account. Um, I need a uh, roll call, a motion to uh, authorize. What was that motion you have to authorize? The creation yeah. of a new <coughs> money market higher interest account at Bay Coast Bank. And um, we got a 4.5% interest rate, which is great. And we want to, and we had voted to put money in higher interest accounts. And so this is just voting to open this particular account and have you all sign your um, signature cards. Is it a certain term or is it just No, open? it's a money market. It's just open. Money market. So money no market. Term on it. Liquid. Is it a certain amount that has to be left in it? No. Anytime? No. Okay. And I have all the forms here we can sign after the meeting. And Lewis, I need a copy. Do you drive his license with you? Yep. I need a copy of that. I can take a picture of it. Got everyone else's. So I need a motion to authorize. Motion to move the $10 million into Bay Coast at a 4.5% interest rate money market. Second. Second. John Erickson, yes. Louis Connors, yes. Joan Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ann Keen, yes. Okay. Um, City Pier. Um, what do we need? To, Karen has some updates yeah, on City Pier. A few little updates on City Pier. Um, so all, the electrical outlets were all installed in time for the Fourth of July event out there, and they worked out really well. They have come in handy in the locations they're at, and um, are working great. And I have um, locks to put on each of the um, outlets so that um, we can lock them for security. Um, the events so far have been really well received. Um, we had to cancel the first yoga session due to Mother Nature um, and her reign, but the, we had one last Monday and this past Monday, and there was more at the second session than there were at the first session, so I think that that's going well. Um, and the second um, perform like picnic performance is this tomorrow night, and it's the City Pride Night. and. Um, they're hopeful we'll get a good crowd. Kite night went really well, and um, they did like re they did rethink a little bit of the setup for this next um, event. But I think it's going to work out. 
really well and hopefully it'll be well attended. And um, there's a music tomorrow night, right? I think they're having a, a like a, a small band like she did for Kite Night. I think it was two people. So I think it's a similar similar thing. The big one will be um, the Narrows one on the 27th, which she's already advertising for. So, but that's outside of the Thursday night. Yeah, that's outside of the Sunday. So. Um, that'll be a, a, a he's going to need the cam locks and thinking everything for that. So um, I'm not sure he's he's thinking the setup all through now how he's going to set it up. So we'll have more on that one, I'm sure. Yes, yeah, so we had some new plannings down there. I don't know if you guys have <coughs> seen them, but it, it looks, looks good. Looks really nice. A few of us were there uh, yesterday. Uh, the folks that are starting the um, the the, pee, the um, moorings up uh, the. Yeah, I was going to give a quick update. On oh, that. you want to talk about that? Okay. Well, yeah. and then I was just going to say that, uh, <coughs> Linda Baker is working on those signs for the no fishing, and so the sign for the no fishing is going to look like no fishing surveillance cameras in use, and they're going to be at the three pot points on the pier. She's going to get back to me by the end of this week with she's just been really backed up with um, when she can when the installation is going to happen. And then these are the ones that are going to go at um, Innovation Way. No trespassing overnight. Unauthorized vehicles will be towed at their expense. And Big Wheel Towing and Recovery is going to be the, they're about the only ones in the area who can actually tow those storage trailers. So, um, so he was um, amenable to help us with that. So these will go up um, at the same time. Are they a local company? He's in a Sonnet. There was no fall road companies? No. All the Fall River companies that I talked to referred me to him. What to tow what? Um, to tow those storage trailers. On on, on one ninety one Commerce Drive. One ninety one. Yeah, one ninety one Commerce Drive. We, yeah, we jumped Drive. over oh, to are, that yeah. because yeah, of that's the song. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is for a commerce. I drive. thought that was. I thought you were talking about some at the city pier. Oh no 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 no. Okay. No, she no. got off on signs. Yeah, so I yeah. got off on the signs. <laughs> okay. So um, no, this is for one ninety one Commerce Drive. When, when are those? When's that going up? Uh, she's gonna let me know by the end of the week. So she's um, she's a little bit backed up. So I said, okay. Um, and then for the docks, uh, Coastal Marine set up their temporary fence yesterday right by, um, so if you look just down from City Pier where the docks are gonna line up, they, they, they did like a square right at where the, the entryway will be and they're gonna actually start the demo work on Monday. Um, and then, um, the fabrication of the docks got a little bit delayed because of the shop drawing submittal and approval process. They work in two week increments and so we got pushed like two weeks. So the docks are due to be delivered and started to be floated in place on August 28th and we're hoping to become substantially complete by September 1st. Coastal Marine is gonna get us a letter from Structure Marine um, confirming the delivery date so um, there'll be a little bit of extension to that contract. But hopefully that's gonna be the only uh, the only blip and we'll be able to get it done quickly. They're gonna be doing all that work off a of barge. So um, all parties, I've notified the harbor master. I've let the mayor's office know because who knows what people might call about. I've let um, DCM know that we've started the project. So they've all been notified. So hopefully um, things will go fairly smoothly. Um, and We'll keep you posted on that. Um, but that's kind of it for City Pier. Johnny, did you have any thoughts about the meeting we had out there? No, no. I mean, it, I, it was nice to see them explain how all the bits and pieces and how it was going to all go together with the, the railings and the ramp and everything. Sounds like it's going to go smoothly. Mm -hmm. The weather cooperates. Yeah. It's all the nature. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, <clears throat> so uh, we need to uh, to um, vote to approve the scope of work for the, the master plan RFP. Um, are you guys familiar with what this is? Is this the Route 79? Yeah. Yes. yeah. So the board approved our um, going ahead uh, to find a consultant for a master plan and to apply for a grant. So we applied for the grant 
and um, applied for 100,000 from um, the state and uh, through the one-stop process. And the board had approved $50,000 so that we could start the master planning early before we even know if we got the 100,000. And so um, Ken took the grant proposal I wrote and turned it into a uh, scope of work and um, a, uh, an RFP. We're gonna show that to John work on that a little bit more to see details of when it will go out and um, how we'll uh, make decisions about it. I guess one question for you is do any of you want to serve on a committee to uh, review the master plans? So you can think about that. You don't need to let Thank us you. know right now. Okay. Yeah. And um, so so we think it's a really good scope of work, and um, we're wondering what, you know, it, so we basically want your approval of the scope for us to go out and put out an RFP. Should we just run, <coughs> run through it a little bit for people at home? Because they don't have this document. Right, that's right. true. Yeah, good idea. Okay, so. Um, <coughs> So the, this is the, the project scope of work. So Sarah and I worked diligently together to try to get a scope that was going to be pretty inclusive um, and really dig into a lot of different things as we look to develop Route 79. So the first aspect of it would be to um, um, full development of a public engagement plan that includes community visioning and review of proposed <coughs> options a detailed market and workforce housing market analysis to assess market supply existing and projected demand current rents projected rents uh, initially achievable and in the future to determine market rate to determine market demand for private sector development and the financial feasibility of residential development a co commercial slash service sector market analysis to determine market demand uh, for feasible commercial uses, including restaurants, cafes, and niche retail. Um, a phase one hotel uh, analysis uh, to determine uh, supply and demand, facility recommendations, and rev room revenue projections. Uh, we also looked at um, recommendations to strengthen and improve neighborhood connectivity between uh, Route 79 and the abutting neighborhoods. Uh, interviews with master developers of comparable urban projects and implementation and implementation strategies based on findings suggestions for revisions to existing waterfront uh, TOD zoning site plan review and design standards framework for projected building heights and square footage for residential restaurant cafe commercial and other mm -hmm. land uses parking space for projected land uses perspective drawings and a bird's eye view of the proposed developments a mobility and connectivity analysis for the development parcels and their entrance and egress points, an assessment of existing and future parking demand and approaches uh, to meet this need, and development of an operations and landscape maintenance program for new development area, Veterans Memorial Park, City Pier, Heritage State Park, and identification of an annual linkage fee structure for landscape improvements and maintenance in those areas. So we're testing everything we could possibly test to see what, what, what the demand is for things, um, how they would be situated along the waterfront, how they would be compatible with one another uh, along the waterfront in the scale and size of development of these types of activities, um, and how it all fits into the essentially the development of a new waterfront community and neighborhood um, that has close proximity to the commuter rail and what impacts, if any, it has <coughs> um, on a summary of the abutting neighborhoods uh, that are close to the, the Wall Street area. Um, certainly those areas, you know, that run along North Main Street, say from Brightman Street up to uh, Turner Street. Turner, right, so um, I think there's, there's a good, I think this is a good scope of work. Obviously everything is subject to to change, um, but I do think this gives us a good, um, a good jump-off point to try to get things moving forward, so that 
when the construction is done, uh, the city, the redevelopment authority, and others are ready to move forward. That's it. Yeah, so, um, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the scope of work for this RFP for 179 Duval Street Corridor Master Plan. So move. Second. Ron Erickson, yes. Uh, yes. Joan Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ann Keene, yes. Uh, next item is um, move to submit the proposed amendment to the Waterfront Urban Renewal Plan to the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. Uh, I need a uh, Well, motion. let me explain. Yeah. Yeah. Let me give some background about that. Um, <coughs> so we had thought that um, the consultant had, well, the consultant had talked with the people uh, who were involved at the Executive Office of housing and livable communities, which always was um, DHCD, and so we're trying to get used to this new acronym. <laughs> um, and they had implied that this could be a minor amendment. But Ken encouraged me to talk with the consultant and make sure that we weren't going to be pushed into making it a major amendment and she, uh, our consultant, talked with Maggie, and Maggie said that it's possible that it can be a minor amendment, but it's possible that they will uh, require it to be a major amendment, and pointed out that the armory was a minor amendment when we did that amendment, but uh, it was just a transfer from the city to the redevelopment authority, and a transfer is exempt from being a major amendment. It would be a minor amendment. So because of that and because we have time frames we're trying to meet, we want, don't want this to go on forever, now we think we'll consider it a major amendment, which means that we'll need to take it to a public meeting, to the planning board, and ideally have you vote after we've had the public meeting where the public could have made suggestions that cause it to change and then bring that back to you and then take it to the city council. So this all was a curveball of this afternoon and so we don't have all of those timed out but we can send them to you. So I had, a thought for sure that we were bringing this to you to vote on and you can vote on it but we if we make any changes we'll need to bring it back to you and ask you to vote again and I'm disappointed <laughs> that we have to make it a major amendment but she's afraid if we that if there were time she would put it in as a proposed minor amendment, then if they push back and said, no, it needs to be a major amendment, then we'd go through that process. But we don't want to take the time and risk learning a month from now that we have to go through that process. Sarah, does this document speak to that? Yes. Well, that's but the document we thought you would we would want so you to approve. This just needs to be tweaked then? Well, if the public meeting uh, indicates we should make changes to it then we would want to bring it back to you otherwise we were planning to submit this right okay so so we can we can still vote to proceed yes you can vote to proceed um, with the next steps of the um, amendment process to the waterfront urban renewal plan okay are you familiar with that, John? No, I didn't. I hadn't looked at this before. No. What What did you ask? I asked if John was familiar with the minor, uh, made, um, major plan change process. I am with those regulations. I just hadn't looked at this specific right. issue. So. Right. Because I think they're now we get into 
statutory time frames for public hearings notice yep. and those right. types of things. Mm -hmm. So this is not going to be something that occurs quickly. Right. Um, What's our time frame for needing to get it done? Well, I, I, there's no specific time frame, but it's you know hopefully sooner as opposed to later, right? Um, but I think we should just probably in the next few days just to try to put some sort of calendar that recognizes mm -hmm. all the different steps right. that are necessary in the statutory time frames. Is there a prohibition from filing a minor amendment while we proceed with the major at the same time, or they don't want to let you do that? Well, I think I, if I'm understanding you correctly, when I'm reading between the lines, is that saying, and I thought this was going to happen. I said this yesterday, right? Yeah, you did. I wish I'd known this a few weeks ago. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, somebody. Um, that this is a, a major plan change. You're going to consider that no matter what we file. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Right. So there's no reason to yeah, to file that. Right. Mm -hmm. Might as well just jump into yep. proceeding with the the process for a major plan change and adhere to those regulations to get the ball started. Yep. Yeah. And just these two. But this was having said. Excuse yeah. me. Having having said that. All the information that they put together mm -hmm. is very helpful. Right. Right. It's, all, so it's the same. It's, it's all the same. It's just right. that, you know, there may be this some slight tweaking. This is the corner lot in the gas station? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there's, you know, they went through the necessary product. The information for a minor plan and a major plan is really not that different, but for the procedures. The procedure and the public input and the right. vote of the council and the planning, the planning board and the council. Yeah. So that means that we're probably with any luck, end of September-ish, maybe. Depending on the planning board schedule. The plan, planning board and, so, and the city council and the statutory periods in between. And the consultants really had thought that they'd gotten an okay to do it. Yeah, that's why they're consultants and not economic development professionals. Because <laughs> <laughs> they get paid twice if they get them all. <laughs> <laughs> no. They actually did a nice job with the preparation of the information. I'll, they, I'll give them credit for that. Uh, so, so I, I do need a, uh, a motion to approve the submission of the proposed amendment to the Waterfront Urban Renewal Plan as developed by Stantec to EOHLC formally. No, we're not going we're not to. Do that. Oh, now this changes. We're okay. we just learned this. Right so before the board meeting. So now we're, um, what you're approving is to go forward with taking it to public meetings before we send it to the state agency. So I'll put a motion to take all steps to file a major amendment to the urban renewal plan. Right. And then if this changes, you come back. But if it stays the same, you just keep going through, right? Do we have a motion for that? So move with John just said. Second. Second. Person, yes, sorry. Louis Consos, yes. Do do we need to adjust their participation? Or are you gonna carry this yourself? The board? The next step of preparing the major modification application. Well, that's true. Now we need to expand the consultant's work, presumably. Um, we have prior approval up to 15000 and the contract's only 7500 So You think, I mean, a good chunk of the work's already been done. Right. I think so. I just yeah. thought, I, I think there's a, you just got to, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's, there's now public costs meetings. for public yeah. notices. There's yeah. costs for preparation of documents as you know other than these ancillary cost you think that 15,000 covers it? I don't, I'm not sure yeah I think um, we should now say maybe up to 25,000 yeah just to be on the safe side give us a little wiggle room there yeah so we're voting for the chair to um, you want two separate motions sure one to accept this and another one to go up to 25,000 on the hour. We're not really accepting anything right, right. now. Yeah. We're just there's a vote to move forward with the filing of a yes. major modification plan. We're not accepting this, although this will be the basis for the initial preparation of that material. And now I think there's the one vote that's that is that vote on the table, and there's a second vote that's going to be to 
expand or increase the line item from 15,000 to 25,000. Okay, so we already had the motion, the second. But you didn't vote we didn't on that. Finish, you, you still yeah. voted. Yeah, 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 yeah two voted. So we're going to do one and then we're going to go back to the other one. Okay. okay. So. Joan Medeiros, yes. Ron Ruchin, yes. And Keen, yes. Okay. Now, motion to change is the heart feet? From no, the increase the, uh, increase the funding. The funding. Increase the funding for the consultant from fifteen to 25000 for the waterfront plan. Second. Wait a minute. Do we want to be so specific as the consultant or the consultant in any ancillary expenses? Cost. Right. Yeah. 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 And and it's up to 25000 Up to 25000 Yes. Okay. Second. Do you have to reword that? Do you want me to reword that? Yes. Yeah. I understood what? it. No, but. <laughs> we, but Karen just needs to, to get it down correctly. Yeah, repeat it one more time. Yeah, so yeah. 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 We'll to do it over. Uh, provide $25,000 for the consultant and any ancillary expenses oh. for the project. Yep. I'll second that. Second. Okay. John Erickson. Who is Gonzalez? Yes. Joe Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ann Keen, yes. Okay. Uh, who's going to speak to the downtown historic district expansion? Huh, I will. Um, we have um, we have had our consultant send a letter to the historic commission asking that um, we not have to create three separate. I think I told you the last time that they yeah. came back and said you should have three small historic districts because there are non-contributing buildings in between. We had him go back and ask that we be able to just create one historic district. They came back and they said, we considered it, and we feel that you can't just have one, and we don't really understand that given other um, districts that have more non-contributing buildings and have very similar situations. So our consultant, at our request, developed a list of um, places that um, have had one historic district with similar disjunctions in it. And we're hoping to have some conversations that may um, help us convince them differently. Do you want to speak to that? No, I think that's a good yep. way to put it. We think there's a legitimate argument that can be made for one district ba based upon past precedent of Mass Historic in uh, creating districts that had non-contributing um, parcels and properties. And what we're asking for, it doesn't seem to be, you know, we're actually, we're adding two, two buildings pretty much. You know, it's not a big deal. So I don't know why they're forcing us to go this road. It doesn't really make sense. I'm sure they have their reasons, but we'd just like to see if they'd consider a reconsideration of what their current position is. We have more information to bring to them to get them to change their mind or? We got, yeah. we got, we got examples. Case studies and stuff like that. Not case studies, but just previously approved okay. districts that have non-contributing parcels yeah. within them. And what they're trying to do is have these districts with no non-contributing parcels. They've just, right. you got two buildings that are eligible one building that's not eligible. So the two buildings that are eligible are a district. Skip over the non-eligible, then you got seven buildings that are eligible, that's another district. Then there's another three buildings that are non-eligible and there's five buildings that are eligible. I'm just Yeah, but it. that's about. Yeah. But that's, they, it's like they're, jump, they're leapfrogging as opposed to just putting all in one oh, district and saying, yeah. okay, these three buildings are non-participating and you got one district. You can't get tax credits for these buildings. Mm -hmm. That's very simple. So, and, anyway. and typical, yeah. you know, they're, the districts are assumed to have non-contributing buildings. And he tried to pull them all together with yeah. a theme, which is important to the Historic Commission, and we don't quite understand. And the, the, the whole thing is, and this is so, uh, we're trying to do this to make the buildings downtown more marketable for housing. The only, realistically, in today's development climate, the only way to make those buildings really cash flow is through historic tax credits. And so 
you would actually, on the upper levels, you'd be creating housing, beach retail, and other services on the, the sidewalk levels. <coughs> but at a time where Massachusetts is, needs more housing, this is a, a way to get it done. Right? So this should be fit within the overall framework of trying to create more housing. And it could be a mixture of affordable market rate and workforce. It could be whatever. But at least the properties themselves would be you know, much more develop, you know, much more financially feasible from a development standpoint if we could move in that direction. <coughs> but when I had talked with them in the beginning and mentioned historic tax credits, they understand the importance of historic tax credits, but it was very clear that they said our process is not really about historic tax credits. It's about creating coherent historic districts. <laughs> Depends on the reviewer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yep. We don't need a vote for that, correct? No. no, no. That was just an update. So you think you'll have, how long do you think it'll take to, for them to get back? So we, we need to... Well, he, they we, got back to us and said that they wouldn't well, accept no that. Like huh? they, they said no. <laughs> so but we, the new information, you're just going to submit it? Or so we're going to now ha ask for a meeting with the appropriate parties to take another fresh look at this thing. Right. So that will be a new set of eyes or will be, mm -hmm. be a new set of eyes, be a new, new people making requests. The right people? Just people. <laughs> Great. Anything else on that? No, Pretty that's good. it. Okay. Uh, the chair makes the finding that open session would have detrimental effect on the negotiating and litigating position of the public body. The purpose of the executive session is to approve the executive session minutes from June 28, 23, and discuss strategy with respect to potential litigation regarding City Pier project, the property at 45 Anawan Street, the license agreement for a parking lot for City Pier events. Since there's no new information or vote, we're not taking up the property at 2501 uh, South Main Street. Uh, I need a roll call to enter into executive session and return to open session. John Erickson, yes. Lois Connell, yes. John Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ian Keen, yes. All right, we're How back in open email? session. Did we, did we vote to go back in open? Yeah, we did yes, vote. Yes, we did. And we are back in open. Uh, okay, uh, I, I, I'll entertain a motion for the chair to sign the closeout change order number six in the final requisition from MAS for an amount not to exceed $59,000. The requisition will not be approved by FRRA until signed off by all other parties and check will not be issued until final requisition is fully executed. So moved. Second? Second. John Erickson, yes. Lewis Conzo's yes. John Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ann Keene, yes. Okay. Um, last item is um, I'll entertain a motion for the chair to execute a parking license agreement with 614 L I'm sorry, 6148 LLC to provide parking for city pier events in the waterfront at the lot between Taylor and Hathaway Streets uh, for a, an 11 month term starting August 1st of this year to June 30th of next year uh, for a cost of 27500 paid in advance. Sounds good. Anything to add to that? Or, or paid upon full execution of the license agreement? In advance, yes. In advance. Yeah. So moved. Second. Second. John Erickson, yes. Rose Consoles, yes. John Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ann Keen, yes. Anybody have any other items? Discuss. Move to uh, motion to adjourn. Second. John Erickson, yes. Wisconsin, yes. Tom Medeiros, yes. Ron Rusin, yes. Ann Keen, yes. Thanks, everybody.